This video is going to show the process that I use by marbling and throwing and trimming a marbled clay bowl. I will have another video when I glaze uh, a variety of marbled pieces so you can see how I will glaze those to really reveal the uh, marbling and uh, not obscure your design. So this is a really fun technique that even a beginner can do. I begin by marbling my clay by um, using a white grogless stoneware. This is a, a B-mix, uh, so it does not have grog. The reason I do that is when I go to scrape it, I don't want it to have any scraped groggy areas. And of course, I just wedge it up. B-mix is one of those fascinating clays. As soon as you start to wedge it, it becomes a little bit more fluid and plastic. Now, the black clay that I'm going to be mixing with this, um, it's a, a PSH clay. Um, I will put the uh, number in the video description here so you can find that, but it is a black cone six clay. It's the same cone as the white clay. You, you really should test your samples to make sure it's going to be compatible. But now I'm sandwiching the bits of clay between one another and I really only give it about a half a dozen uh, twists and turns when I wedge it. And the clay really must be the same moisture content as the, um, the as each other. And I do use about a four to one ratio, about four times as much uh, white clay as I use black clay. And again, probably about a half a dozen turns, maybe with the bigger ones a little bit more. Now this is going to be the bowl making. And again, you want the clays to be the same moisture because you will notice right away if you have one clay that's a lot softer, that's going to throw pretty unevenly. So uh, I'm beginning to make a bowl just the way that I always show my students. I uh, encourage them to cone. Uh, maybe three times for a beginner. It's helpful when you are coning. Remember that you want to try to keep the uh, the top of it domed as you're coning. That certainly will help you to um, get the off-centeredness out of the clay a little bit more easily. So cone, push down, cone, push down. And remember that you always want to make sure that it's centered where it's meeting the bat. And then as you raise your hands, it brings any off-centeredness up to the tip of the cone. And that's how you're getting it centered, by you bring the off-centeredness up. Once it is fully centered, then I make it to the hockey puck and I'm dropping the middle. Um, I show my kids an easy way to drop it with the left thumb. And because I'm making a bowl, I'm rounding the interior bottom. And now I'm just pulling on the wall. And remember, as I pull, uh, I do it on the right-hand side, and I will gently uh, stabilize the rim when I get to the top. Now you'll notice that the marbling is somewhat obscured right now because it really does have a gray slip, a slurry that's on the exterior of it that will get cleaned up, and uh, it will become clearer um, as I progress. If you want to see more detailed information on throwing, I have several other videos step-by-step step, carefully going over the throwing. Here I'm just trimming the edge because I wasn't fully happy with that. Um, I'm also working on a new series of videos soon. Now here I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, take that slurry off. And I'm using a small stainless steel mud tools rib. Um, I love the small metal ribs and I'm using it in a manner very perpendicular to the clay to scrape away the slip rather than compress the slip down. I want to physically remove the slip and notice I will take the rib and then I clean it off on my towel or my sponge. And the marbling is uh, really revealed once you do that. Make sure that you try to get the interior of it on the day that you throw. If you don't get the exterior that well, you can always trim the exterior when you're uh, going to trim a foot on it. But I'd really recommend not trimming the interior when it's leather hard. Try to get that finished 
you know, uh, when, when it's being thrown. And once you have it scraped, then you want to let it stiffen. And for my students, of course, you would put that in the damp cabinet. Once it's in the leather hard state, then I am going to trim a foot. And I happen to be using a sticky bat here, but you can use whatever means you like to trim, whether it's a chum or you like a Giffen grip or lugs. Um, the, the sticky bat, I'll link in the video description so you can see that as well. I'm just taking off any of the awkward corner that I have there. And I'm really just trying to uh, make sure that I'm cutting cleanly and I periodically will uh, this is maybe a little bit on the sticky leather hard stage, so I periodically have to remove some of these trimmings. Oh, and I do save all of these trimmings, and I'll show you in another video what I do with all these scraps. Because when you do get all these scraps, it doesn't, you know, marble quite as nicely as uh, the, the fresh clay that you've just wedged together. But um, uh, kind of stay tuned for another video on that. Now you can see on the bottom, as I'm taking that off, I'm really carving away. You can see all that gray slip that was on the bottom there, from uh, especially when my hand was holding it and compressing it. And as I cut, I start to reveal more areas of marbleization. And I was just tapping the bottom there. And of course, this is sped up. But sometimes you can tap the bottom to hear uh, a sound change to know if you're getting close to your uh, proper depth. You know, part of the art is learning how to gauge the correct depth for your, uh, your pieces when you're trimming so you don't go through. And I will also show another video on how I do the glazing on these. I will use either clear or I will use a transparent celadon glaze so I can really show off the marbling. So, check back uh, for that and I will also put it in the series on my playlist of marbled pots.